pointing to more trouble for president than the Democratic Party. The poll reveals an increasing majority of voters, 58 percent, are calling for his administration to be tougher on immigration, on those trying to cross the border and indeed successfully crossing the border illegally. 41 percent of Democratic voters say Biden should be tougher. That number is up 7 percent from February. 39 percent of Democrats believe that President Biden is handling the border crisis in the right way. Let's bring in News Nation political contributor Chris Hine. Good morning, Chris. You know, the economy, his age and his perceived mental capacity for some aside, could this be a make or break in Biden's reelection bid in 2024? Oh, my goodness, probably. Right. Depending on who <laughs> they run against him. Uh, I mean, you know, look, all these things. All these things matter, right? I mean, look, first of all, happy Monday to you, Adrian. Happy Monday. It's been a while. Yeah. I hope you had a great weekend. I, did. I hope America had a great weekend. Uh, I hope President Biden had a great weekend in Japan. But yes, these are very important issues that will matter to the voters. However, there are a lot of important issues that are going to matter to voters. And, I, and we saw in 2022, choice and freedom are a very big issue for voters. And that will drive their decision depending on who runs against President Biden. I quite frankly think the border issue is not as big of a deal as it is made out in the media, as it's made out on the right. I think it's something that we have dealt with here in this country poorly. I think we need comprehensive immigration reform. And I think both parties are to blame for that not getting done. So I want to ask you to a, a little for a little bit more on that. You say it's not as big a deal as the media is making it out to be. For those watching at home, how much attention should we be giving the border? We had nearly three million people crossing into the country, the overwhelming majority illegal, and those are just the ones we know about. A record yeah. in 2022. Why should this not be getting so much attention? Well, because it doesn't really impact the daily lives of most Americans. Now, look, I get it. I, I you know, live here in New York. Uh, we are getting uh, buses of immigrants every day, and the city's got to figure out how to deal with it. The surrounding region has to figure out how to deal with it. Obviously, it is a major problem for communities along the border. But let's be clear. We are a nation of immigrants, and we have a labor shortage in this country right now. We don't have enough people to do the jobs we have open right now, and that is a drain on our economy. We have to look at this as a capitalist problem. Uh, you know, there is a demand for labor. There is a demand for these immigrants in this country, and there is a supply waiting there uh, to, to come here and fulfill that demand. We should figure out a way to process that in a way that is not a burden on local communities, a burden on states, and the federal government needs to do that. There was a law that passed the Senate that did not get taken up in the House in 2013 that would have done a lot, a lot to resolve that and provide additional security at the border to make sure that bad things weren't coming over the border. We have to act comprehensively and not just look at this as a problem that needs to be solved right now, right in front of it. It's a long-term problem that has not been properly addressed by the Congress and by the president, and it needs to be done that way. So I'm going to actually ask you to clarify saying that it's not affecting everyday Americans. I'm going to have you address that with one simple word, Chris, fentanyl. Fentanyl. It is affecting a lot of American families today, and a lot of parents are angry and fearful that it could hit their household. Yeah, and, and they should be. Uh, but that is not what the vast majority of people at the border are doing. And again, the 2013 Border Security and Immigration Modernization Act would have provided $20 billion of additional security at the border every single year. Passed the Senate, was not taken up by the House. And it was a bipartisan bill sponsored by Lindsey Graham and Chuck Schumer together, holding hands, bringing it to the floor, got a vote, wouldn't come up in the, in the House. And yeah, but look, there are millions of people at the border. Some of them have bad intentions. Most of them are coming here for the same reasons my family came here in the 30s and 40s. And uh, I think that we have to find a way to, to separate the good from the bad. I love you, Chris. I love that your family came here because now we have the miracle of Chris. Uh, but there are a lot of people <laughs> who are watching who would disagree with everything you just said because the millions of people yes. who are not doing bad things have been used as diversion tactics. We always blame, uh, or uh, many times people are blaming uh, governors and mayors here in the United States for using people as political pawns, but it's the cartel 
that we ultimately all should be angry and outraged over using I, children I and innocent people's lives as pawns to distract from the weapons and the drugs that the few bad apples are bringing across the border. Uh, so I do think that there are people who would say <laughs> to you, Chris. All right. Thank you so much. News <laughs> Asian political analyst Chris Hahn. Yeah, but, but at we least you love called you. me a miracle, mm -hmm. so that's good. I love <laughs> Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.